Today I will explain in detail how does email function. Can you guess how many emails are sent each day? Approximately 330 billion e emails were sent only in 2022 as per research organization's report. In today's digital age, email has become a crucial tool for professionals and for uh, personal communication also. Cyber criminals also use emails as a means of communication. Therefore, it is important to understand the process of email communication and the procedures involved. By understanding this, it becomes easier to extract evidence during email investigation and forensics. When an email is sent, it is first composed on an email client. It may be Outlook or web interface such as Gmail, Hotmail, etc. Email process begins when a user sends the email message using the email client like Gmail, Hotmail, Outlook or Thunderbird, etc. So initially what happens is when we draft the email message, it approaches the sender's mail server. Suppose you are sending the mail to someone, then your mail will go to your uh, mail server and then that mail server uses a protocol called as SMTP. It stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. It is the standard protocol for sending email messages between the servers. Between the server means incoming mail server and outgoing mail server. So most email systems that send mail over the internet use SMTP to send messages from one server to another and to deliver messages to local mail clients. It may be your Outlook or Apple Mail or Gmail. When we say local mail clients, first your mail will reach to uh, the recipient mail server and then it will be delivered to the device of that user. So this is how an email message is being forwarded and it is typically done through a process called as mail transfer. So once the email message reaches the recipient mail server, it is stored there until the recipient retrieves it using either IMAP or POP. POP stands for Post Office Protocol, which is another standard used for receiving email. POP is a protocol used to retrieve email from a mail server. And it is typically used by email clients, as we said, Outlook, Apple Mail, Thunderbird, etc. POP clients connect to a mail server, retrieve all the messages and then disconnect. Once the messages are downloaded, they are typically removed from the web server. This means that if you want to access your emails from multiple devices, you have to download them multiple times. While if you use IMAP, the internet message access protocol, this protocol is also used to retrieve and manage email messages from mail server similar to POP, but it is better than POP. So when we configure our client, email client on our device, we have to choose whether we want to use POP or IMAP. IMAP is typically used by all the email clients and it, it connects to a mail server and like pop it also retrieve and manages email messages but without having to download them this means that if you want to access your emails from multiple devices you can do so without having to download them multiple times because imap supports many features that pop does not therefore it is generally considered to be a better choice than pop because it is more flexible and provides more functionality features. Along the way, the email message may pass through multiple servers. Multiple servers when we say means it may be the spam filter server, a server which is where firewalls are installed and there may be multiple gateways. And these are used to ensure the security and integrity of the email message because the way you have drafted the message and you have forwarded, same way it should reach to the recipient. There should not be any modification. So these servers add additional features such as encryption for security to prevent spam and malware, etc. So overall, the email message flow is a complex process. 
that involves many different components and technologies working together to ensure that the email message arrives at its destination in a timely and secure manner. So it is a general overview of how email is sent and delivered. But now let us understand it more clearly. I will explain more technicalities which are involved in this particular communication or say email communication. So when you compose and send an email, so messages first sent from your email client to your mail server as we discussed and it is typically operated by your email server provider that may be Gmail, Hotmail, Outlook etc. So the mail server then uses the SMTP simple mail transfer protocol to send the message to the recipient mail server. So as the message travels across the internet, it passes through various routers and servers which are responsible for routing the message to its destination. So here domain name system is used. What is DNS? How does it works? I have made one another video on it. I will mention the link in the description box so you may see that. So here DNS is used to convert the domain name of the recipient mail address such as gmail.com into an IP address because computers does not understand in the English or any other language. It will route the message to the correct server. So what happens is your gmail.com will look for the IP address it is being pointed to. So once the email reaches the recipient mail server, it is checked for spam and then delivered to the recipient mailbox. Recipient can then access the message using his or her email client or web interface like say for Gmail we use web interface. For corporate also we use web interface. Because email communication is bit more complex and there are many other details and protocols that are involved in the process. What are those? Say uh, email client may use one of the protocols like IMAP or POP3 which we discussed already to connect to the mail server and retrieve the mail. Second may be email security protocol mechanism such as SSL. SSL stands for secure transfer layer or TLS. This is also used for secure communication between the email server and SSL stands for secure socket layers. It is a protocol for establishing secure connections between web servers and the clients. It is used to encrypted uh, data sent over the internet. So plain text language will not travel, it will be encoded. And say credit card numbers, login credentials, these all are encrypted by the servers so that these are prevented from being intercepted by the unauthorized parties. And SSL was replaced by TLS. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security and nowadays we, mostly we use T, uh, TLS and email authentication mechanisms such as DKIM, DMARC etc. also used to you know prevent from email spoofing, phishing etc. SPF stands for St uh, Sender's Policy Framework. It is the mail authentication method designed to detect forged sender address in the mails if any and it will verify that incoming mail from a domain comes from an IP address which is authorized by that domain administrator. It is a type of DNS TXT record that identifies which mail servers are authorized to send email on behalf of a, a particular domain. And mail exchangers use the DNS to check that mail from a given domain that is being sent by a host sanctioned by that particular domains administrator. So proper validation authentication is happening. Likewise DKIM, DKIM stands for domain keys identified mail. It is also an email authentication method. It allows the person receiving the email to check that it was actually sent by the domain it claims to be sent from and that it has not been modified during transmission. So this is done by using a digital signature which is added to the message headers. The signature is based on a private key and it is held by the email sender and public key which is published by the DNS. So the recipient can use the public key to verify the signature and thus confirms that message is authentic. 
then comes another term which is dmark stand for domain based message authentication reporting and confirmance it is also an email authentication protocol it builds upon the widely deployed spf and dkim protocols and adding a reporting function that allows senders and receivers to improve and monitor protection of the domain from fraudulent email so dmark allows a domain owner to publish a policy in their dns records that specifies which mechanism say spf or dkim are used to authenticate email messages sent from their domain as well as instructions for receivers on what to do if neither mechanism passes so proper see proper validation is happening it also provides a way for email receivers to report back to the domain owner about messages that pass or fail whatever is happening during the evaluation process of domain owners publish published policy second process may be email filtering and blocking mechanism say spam filters may be content filter may be some blocked words are being uh, those email will not pass which are having abusive words so content filtering is happening so overall the email is a complex network of interconnected servers and protocols that work together to ensure that messages are delivered quickly and securely so and there may be other uh, topics also in the same email communication process to understand such as what happens when email message fails or bounces how to go through uh, or how to do the analysis of email headers to identify whether mail is spoofed or genuine or not or from where it has come mx record what are these email policy violation etc so i will explain these uh, topics in some other videos this is all for today and uh, you may write in the comment box if you have benefited or you may share the video with others